Inside thunderstorms, there's lots of updrafts and downdrafts, and the air is moving a lot. In a downburst, it's where these thunderstorm winds in the top kind of rush out and hit the bottom of the ground and then move out, and it covers a wider area. In a microburst, it's a smaller scale feature, usually a mile or less, but being smaller, that air is really focused right down to the ground. So sometimes with the microburst, wind gusts can be as high as like an EF3 tornado, 150 miles an hour or higher. Inside of a thunderstorm, the air moves around a lot, and you have updrafts, the air being pulled into the storm, and then the downdraft, and that's the air pushing out. And when that reaches the top peak of the thunderstorm and is pushed down to the ground, as it hits the ground, the air spreads out and usually spreads forward ahead of the thunderstorm. And when it hits the ground, it's accelerated, so it really starts to increase in speed, and you can have speeds in downbursts of 100 miles an hour or more, sometimes as strong as smaller tornadoes. When you look inside of a thunderstorm and you think about tornadoes, we're usually talking about wind shear or wind shifting around. So you have a lot of wind directional changes inside the storm and that's what creates the spin for the tornado to come down to the ground. It's usually in a downburst or a downdraft, the wind is all coming from the same direction. So when you look at damage from a downburst, usually the trees are spread out in one direction. In a tornado, it's some type of twisting. You see the trees or any type of damage twisted around. Downbursts happen much more often than you would think. When you compare it to a tornado, it's usually 10 times the amount when you look back at storm reports for the year. So they're much more frequent. It's just they're usually not as intense as most tornadoes, but they can produce quite a bit of damage when you have 70, 80, even 100 mile an hour or stronger winds bursting down to the earth. The strongest microburst on record was actually back in 1983. It was in Washington, D.C. at Andrews Air Force Base. The wind was clocked uh, at least 130 miles an hour, but where they had the wind sensor, it wasn't in the center of the microburst from what they could tell on radar, so it may have been even stronger speeds, up to 150 miles an hour. And the interesting part with that, it wasn't that long before, several minutes before, where Air Force One actually landed there at the uh, Air Force Base. Thankfully, it wasn't near the microburst at the time, but a few minutes minutes later it kind of rolled through so you can imagine what 130 to 150 mile an hour winds would have done for damage had it been in an area that was more populated.